Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll show you how to set up V2Ray with TLS for a secure and private connection. We'll go step by step from setting up the server to enabling TLS and creating secure configs. So let's get started. First, you need a VPS with at least one CPU and one gigabyte of RAM running either Ubuntu 20.04 or Debian 11 or higher. If you don't have a VPS or don't know how to buy one, check out my video, How to Buy VPS, Full Tutorial 2025. The link is in the description. After creating your VPS, you need to connect to it. I use Termius, the SSH client I personally recommend. If you don't know how to do that, I also cover it in my video, How to Connect to Your VPS Using Termius. The link is in the description. Open Termius, create a new host, enter your VPS IP, Set the username to root and enter the VPS password that's usually sent to you by email. Then connect. Before doing anything else, update your system by running this command. This makes sure your server is fully up to date before installing any new software. The update process may take a few minutes to complete. During the update, you might be asked to confirm actions or select options. Just accept or approve them until the installation finishes. To install the V2Ray server on your VPS, we'll use a script by Sinai, which makes the setup fast and easy. To install it, run this command. When asked, would you like to customize the panel port setting, type Y and press Enter, then type a port number and press Enter again. If you're not sure which port to use, just do exactly what I do. After the installation is complete, type X-UI and press Enter to open the V2Ray menu. Then type 6 and press Enter to set the admin username and password. It will ask for confirmation, type Y and press Enter. Enter the username you want and press Enter. Then type your password and press Enter. Type Y and press Enter. It will ask to restart the panel. Type Y and press Enter. After the panel restarts, press Enter again to return to the main menu. Type 10 and press Enter to display the web UI address. Hold Control and click the link to launch it directly in your browser. Once the web UI opens, log in using the username and password you created. Now you've successfully created a V2Ray server on your VPS. You can already create configs and use them on any device, but these configs are not secure because there's no TLS. To enable TLS, we need a personal domain. In this video, I'll use Hostinger, where you can buy a domain for about $1 per year. First, go to the Hostinger website and sign up. I've already signed up, so I'll just log in, but if you haven't yet, you can use the link in the description to sign up and also get a free bonus. After logging in, go to the Domains tab and click Get New Domain. Then type the name you want for your domain. If the name you choose is less popular, the price will be lower. But if you want a popular name, the price will be higher. I'll type Blue Falcon. And as you can see, this domain name isn't popular, so the prices start from $1, which is exactly what I want. You can also choose the domain extension like .com, .fun, .online, and so on. Usually .com is the most popular and expensive one, but for us, there's no difference. All extensions work fine for VPN use. So I'll choose the .fun extension because it only costs $1. You can choose anything you want, but I'm keeping the price low. Next, choose how long you want to register your domain. Select one year because it's cheaper. And since we're using this for a VPN, the domain might eventually get detected or blocked. So keeping it short makes more sense. If your domain gets filtered or expires after one year, you can easily buy another one with any name you like. After selecting one year, click Choose Payment Method. You can pay with credit card, PayPal, Google Pay, Apple Pay, or even crypto. Personally, I prefer crypto, but you can use whatever method works best for you. 
Once you complete the payment, you'll be redirected to the domain registration page. First, choose your country. Then select personal and click next. Then fill out your personal information, first name, last name, email, country, address, and phone number. Then click finish registration. After a few moments, Hostinger will send you a verification email. You must verify your email to activate your domain. So go to your inbox, open the email from Hostinger, and click verify email. After that, it will show your email is verified. Now your domain is ready to use. Next, we need to link our VPS IP address to our domain. Think of it like saving a contact on your phone. Instead of remembering your dad's phone number every time, you just save it as dad and call him easily. Domains work the same way. Instead of typing an IP address every time, you can use an easy to remember name. Right now, we haven't linked our IP to our domain. To do that in your Hostinger panel, go to the Domains tab, find your domain and click Manage. From the left panel, go to DNS slash name servers and in the Manage DNS records section, set the type to A. In the name field, enter your subdomain this will be the part that comes before your main domain name. For example, my domain is bluefalcon.fun, and I'll set the subdomain to menu, so my full domain becomes menu.bluefalcon.fun. You can also use just your main domain by typing at in the name field, but that's not recommended. If your main domain without subdomain gets filtered, you won't be able to use it again for VPN. But if you use a subdomain and it gets filtered, only that subdomain is blocked and you can simply create a new one like plus.bluefalcon.fun and use it again. So in my case, I'll use menu.bluefalcon.fun for my VPN. In the points to field, enter your VPS IP address, then click add record. It may take a few minutes for the domain to connect to your IP. Now that we've linked the domain to our VPS IP, we need to set it up in V2Ray and get an SSL certificate for our domain. Because we're using the Sinai panel, this is very easy. It includes built-in SSL support. To do that, in the terminal, type x-ui to open the v2ray panel, then type 18 and press enter to get a certificate for your domain. Next, type one and press enter to start the SSL process. After a few moments, it will ask for your domain name. Type your full domain, including the subdomain. For me, that's menu.bluefalcon.fun then press enter. When it asks for the port, just press enter to begin. After a moment, it will automatically get the cell certificate and save it on your VPS. Then it will ask if you want to reload ACME, type Y and press enter. Next, type one and press enter. When it asks to set the certificate for the panel, type Y and press enter. It will automatically apply it, and after a few seconds, press enter again to return to the V2Ray menu. Now type 10 and press enter to see the panel information. As you can see, our panel address has changed from the IP to our domain. Hold control and click the panel address. It will open in your browser. Log in using your username and password, then click login. Now you can see our panel is secured with HTTPS using our domain. To create configs, go to the Inbounds page and click Add Inbound. In the Remark field, type any name you want for this config. Set the protocol to VLESS. Then click on Client to set your first user details. I'll type User1, but you can use any name you want, like John, Armin, or anything else. Next, set Transmission to WebSocket. In Security, select TLS. Then click on Set Cert from Panel. This will use the certificate you got earlier. Now click on Get New ECH Cert. This will generate a new encryption certificate for even stronger security. Finally, click Create, and your new secure config is ready. To connect to V2Ray on Windows, you can use V2Ray N. I'll put the link to its download page in the description. Since I'm using Windows, I'll download the Windows version, specifically the self-contained one, because it already includes all the necessary requirements to run. 
After downloading, extract the ZIP file. It will create a folder. You can copy this folder anywhere you like, but I personally prefer to move it to the C drive. Once copied, open the folder, right-click on v2rayn.exe and select Pin to Start. This adds the app to your Start menu, making it easier to open next time. Now open the Start menu, right-click on v2rayn and select Run as Administrator. You can run it normally too, but some features need admin privileges. When the app opens, you'll notice there are no configs yet, so we need to add your v2ray config. Go to your v2ray web panel, click the plus icon next to your config, and it will show all users for that config. To copy the config for a user, click the QR code icon next to that user. You'll see two QR codes, one for the normal config and another for the subscription config. For now, we only need the normal one, so click that QR code. It will automatically copy the config link to your clipboard. Now go back to the V2RayN app. To import the config, open the configuration menu and select Import Share Links from Clipboard. You can also use the shortcut Control plus V to paste it directly. After importing, your config will appear in the list. Click the reload button. This will test the connection and show the delay in milliseconds. If you see a number, for example, 150 milliseconds, that means your config works correctly. If it shows minus one, that means the connection failed. Once you get a ping value, you can connect. Under System Proxy, select Set System Proxy. This activates V2Ray as your system proxy. Some apps don't use the system proxy automatically. In that case, enable the Enable TUN option. This will tunnel all your Windows traffic through V2Ray. Personally, I prefer using System Proxy since it's more stable and lighter. But if the app you're using doesn't work with proxy mode, then enable Enable Ton. Keep in mind if you use Enable Ton to disconnect, just disable the same option. Also, if you use System Proxy to disconnect, select Clear System Proxy. That removes the V2Ray proxy settings from your system. Finally, let's confirm our connection. As you can see, our device IP is now the same as our VPS IP, which means we've successfully connected. To connect on Android, you can use the same user you created earlier, or you can create a new one just for your phone. Go to your V2Ray web panel and open the Inbounds tab. Click the three dots next to your config, then click Add Client. In the email field, type a name for this user, for example, Sarah, Merlin, or anything you want. You can also set a data limit or an expiration date, but for now, I'll leave everything unchanged so this user has no limits. Then click Add Client. It will create a new user with the name you entered. Earlier, we already created one user, so now we have two. To copy the new user's config, click the QR code icon next to that user, and then click on the QR code that appears. Now you need to send this config to your phone. You can use any method you prefer like Telegram, WhatsApp, email, Personally, I like using Google Keep for text. I'll paste the config into Google Keep so I can easily access it on my phone with the same Google account. Next, go to your Android phone and download the app used to connect to V2Ray. I personally recommend V2Ray NG. To install it, go to its GitHub download page. The link is in the description. Download the version that matches your phone's CPU architecture. If you don't know your phone's CPU type, just download the universal version it works on all Android devices. After downloading, install the app. Now copy the config to your phone's clipboard. Since I used Google Keep, I'll open it and copy the config. Then open the V2RayNG app. Tap the plus icon in the top right corner and from the menu, select Import Config from Clipboard. It will automatically import your config into the app. To connect, tap the play icon at the bottom right corner. The first time you connect, the app will ask for permissions. Just allow all of them. Now you're connected. To check the connection, tap the text at the bottom of the app. It will show the delay in milliseconds. If you get a number, like 120 milliseconds, it means your config works correctly. If it shows minus one, that means the connection didn't work. Finally, let's confirm our connection. As you can see, our device IP is now the same as our VPS IP, which means we've successfully connected. And that's it.
Your V2 Ray server is now secure with TLS, so you can safely use your configs and enjoy fast encrypted connections. You can still use V2 Ray without TLS. In that case, all you need is just a VPS, no domain required. It won't be encrypted, but for most people, that's enough. However, if you want encryption and better security, I strongly recommend enabling TLS. With TLS enabled, you can even create more advanced configs, not just VLESS and WebSocket. But personally, this setup is what I use every day, and it works great. In my next video, I'll show you another method to make your V2 Ray server even more secure. So make sure to follow my channel so you don't miss it. And if you like this video, please support me with your beautiful hands by hitting the like button. It really encourages me to make more tutorials like this. I already have several other videos like this on my channel, and I highly recommend checking them out. I promise you won't regret it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.